Hello defensemen. I was reviewing a recent game and I wanted to show you a video that I made to help you understand positioning in the offensive zone and how we can angle better. First, I wanted to show you a couple of clips. While watching these clips, take notice on how quickly we are exiting the zone and not challenging the puck carrier. I can understand why you'd want to play it safe, however, exiting the zone quickly allows the other team to build up speed and carry the puck into our zone unchallenged. When we pivot to backward this early, it also gives the opposing team the ability to skate anywhere they want. By the time we step up and challenge, we are already backed up too far into our zone, flat-footed, and we don't have the speed we need to stop the player. In the future, avoid being flat-footed while positioned at the blue line. Keep your feet moving, tracking the puck, and making yourself an option for a pass. Read the play and try to predict when the other team is going to get the puck. When the other team does get the puck and begins breaking out, position yourself in a way that will force the puck carrier towards the wall. If you create an imaginary line from the player to our net, you want to be closer to the middle of the ice, giving the other team no other option but to skate to the outside towards the boards. Remember, good players will always be aware of where your stick is, so use your stick to close off any attempt to cut to the middle. Now, tighten up your gap. A gap is a space between you and the other player. Ideally, you want to be within two stick lengths of the puck carrier. If you are more than two stick lengths away, it's going to give the puck carrier way too much time to build up speed. To be sure you don't do a drive-by or get flat-footed, you want to skate with the other player and match their speed. That way, we can make sure we won't get beat and we have the opportunity to make several efforts to steal the puck. It's important to remember that you should mainly be skating forward when you're attacking the other player. You don't want to pivot backward until the last minute when you are pinching the player to the boards. As I mentioned before, pivoting backward too early gives a puck carrier an open path to the middle. Now that you've trapped the player, we force them into the boards and take the body. We can't lower our shoulder and throw a check, but we can bump into the other player, lift their stick, and poke check to steal the puck. This technique allows us to control the other player, not be controlled by them.